everybody what's going on welcome back to another new video uh today by popular demand i'm taking a look at void lens uh if you're not familiar with void linux that's probably a lot of people it's not a huge distribution in terms of total users but it is very interesting to me much like soulless another distribution that i made a video about it's it's not a distribution that's based on fedora or red hat or, or ubuntu or arch which is the vast majority of linux distributions out there the uh, void window manager is built independently has its own package manager and in a lot of ways it's it's really special it seems like one of those things sort of like dev one i guess is another example i could think of it's not forked the way that dev one is but it seems like it's created because there were people using maybe arch i don't know that had an issue with the way that some things worked uh in particular the package manager uh and that's what everyone points to when they say hey use void the package manager is great and that's true we'll get into that in a bit this is very interesting to me uh because as much as i like arch i think the thing that everyone will tell you that's great about arch is not uh pacman itself the arch linux package manager pacman is fine but it does have some problems that xps aims to solve um mainly the thing that makes Arch Linux, Arch Linux is the AUR. It's incredibly easy to compile apps that aren't in the standard repos. And so while maybe there's some apps that you use every day that aren't in the standard Pac-Man repositories, it's super easy to uh, get them anyways. Void has a similar thing going on here. Uh, basically, its package manager is, I think, similar to the Debian package manager. Feel free to correct me if you're, I'm wrong in the description. Uh, but all I really mean is that by default, it's only going to give you access to free software or open source, you know, free as in freedom, not free as in beer. I, I think most people that are using Linux are familiar with that concept. You can definitely install uh, closed source apps like Chrome or anything else that you may use frequently that isn't a free app. It's not terribly difficult to do. It's just not in the sort of standard main repository. Uh, we may or may not get into that later. Uh, for now, I just thought let's try to get this thing set up, see how hard it is. I just grabbed the uh, base install off of the Void Linux website. Uh, so it looks like uh, what you need to do here is uh, you can log in, log in as root uh, by just using Void Linux as the user. And the password is, I do not know. It does not say the password. Why doesn't it? Oh, you know what? I'm doing this stupid. Hold up. User is root. Password is Void Linux. Uh, so now we have just sort of a standard prompt. And if I read that correctly, what we should be able to do is run Void Installer to go ahead and get started. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's Void Install. No, it was Void. Oh, I just spelled installer wrong. There we go. Welcome to the Void Linux installation, a simple and minimal Linux distribution. I don't need to read this. Everybody knows how to read. Uh, it is saying if you're running into problems that they want you to use uh, their IRC chat. So I, I, I don't think we'll get there, but this looks pretty straightforward. So set up the network. Uh, network's good. Set up the source installation. Uh, I am going to do a network install just to get like the most recent packages. Uh, you can install off of an ISO, of course, if you don't have network access when you're doing the install or whatever. Although I imagine since this is the base ISO, that might be slightly tricky for you. Uh, we'll set up a host name here. Call this bad boy uh, Tenet. Uh, set up the system locale. Uh, this looks like sort of the same thing you get with Arch. We just need to find en underscore us English United States of America UTF-8. Nice. Set a time zone. Go America or Chicago. Give me Chicago. There we go. Uh, and we need to set a root password. Uh, obviously, you want this to be secure. User account. Uh, give it a name and uh, enter a username. Beautiful. And we want to set a password again. Very secure. We need to select a group for it. It looks like it automatically puts us in the wheel group, which is how the group you need to be in for most of these sort of minimal installations, whether you're doing BSD or Arch, uh, in order to run sudo, uh, which, so obviously we need to be there. Uh, and we probably don't need to throw it in any other groups. I think they uh, know what they're doing there. Go ahead and hit OK. Uh, bootloader, uh, we're just going to put it on our main drive here. You can see this is just a 50 gig drive. Use a graphical terminal for bootloader. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, and then we just need to do a partition. Um, I guess normally you would sort of create a whole bunch of partitions, you know, or two or three at least, you know, you might have like a swap partition and uh, maybe an EFI partition if you have to boot that way. But what we're going to do is just really, really easy, straightforward for the uh, VM. You want to select DOS and uh, what you want to do is we're using CF disk just because it's a little easier to manipulate. 
manipulate. Uh, we're going to create a new partition here. Uh, we'll just make it the size of our entire drive, 50.3 gigs, make it a primary. Uh, we want to just come over to type, make sure the type is set to standard Linux, and then write that, type in yes, and then I think it's just Q to exit. Okay. Now it wants to select file systems. This is great. Uh, ext4 is sort of the Linux default. Um, more recently, I've been using uh, ButterFS, which uh, I've had no problems with really. There's probably better videos you can see explaining the differences in file systems. I guess we'll just go with ButterFS. That's been working well. And then please specify the mount point for slash dev slash sda1. Um, what I believe is asking us is where it wants us to mount the partition, like if we were to go and access it. So I'm gonna put slash mnt. Uh, I suppose you can put it wherever you want. Uh, do you want to create a new file system on SDA1, which is our partition we just created? Yes, we do. And okay, I feel like maybe this is the kind of install where it's not necessary to have gone the whole Arch Linux route, but it could be helpful for you. All right, and then I guess we can go ahead and hit install. Uh, it says the root password has not been configured. Uh, bullshit. Try it again. Root password has not been configured. Please do so. Okay, let's try an actual root password. Maybe that's the issue. Amount point for the root file system slash has not been configured uh okay do that again butterfs please specify the mount point for devs maybe we'll just put it at slash okay oh you know what i think i might know what the problem is uh let's go back into that partition and uh whenever we do cf disk i think we need to make that partition bootable that very well might have been the problem i've got hung up there in a uh, arch install a few times so once we've done that we should be able to quit out of that go to the file systems again pick sda1 butterfs i'm pretty Pretty sure we're supposed to mount it on slash not slash mnt though i don't know why that would make a difference hit enter it's gonna ask if we want to create a new file system we do and we should be good to install this time following operations will be executed new file system but rfs all data is going to be destroyed okay hey there we go i think it'll probably depend on your network connection how long this will take like i said we're downloading to get the more most recent uh updates for all the software if you're just installing off of the uh, iso obviously this is going to be completely dependent on how fast your system drive and CPU is, but uh, this is going to take probably not too long to download. This appears to be a fairly minimal OS, maybe not quite as minimal as something like Arch or Gen 2, certainly, but yeah. Don't miss the all new television adventures of Star Trek The Next Generation. Okay, uh, I think we're set here. That took about 10 minutes on uh, my uh, network connection. I think my network connection usually sits somewhere around 20 megabit. So uh, you can figure that out from context and maybe guess it. You know, it takes about as long as anything would to install. Like I said, this is fairly minimal. Certainly a lot more included here than um, Arch, but eh, it's okay. I don't really mind so much. Uh, and it looks like we are all good to go. So asking if we want to reboot. The answer to that is yes. Go ahead and exit and exit and uh let's see here just gonna have to hop out of this vm real quick uh okay so we'll go ahead and power off and uh this is the point where you would pull out your usb stick and then we can go ahead and uh restart here and uh we're booting in for the first time here so we're good to log in i'm gonna log in with the user account that i created not as root and where are we we are in our home directory looks like a fairly similar setup to most linux distributions it's storing a user account and slash home slash mac i don't know what kind of apps we have here i do know if we want to install an app there's a couple of different ways to do it and this is where we get into xbps xbps the first weird thing that you might notice is it's not really a program in the typical sense if i were to try to pull up a man page it ain't there that's weird but apparently the reason for this is because xbps works by having individual programs so if i want to pull up a man page for xbps install there we go. They're separated into various different programs. And if you do pull up the man page, you can see the different options that you can have with it, all that kind of stuff. What I want to do is use a program called XBPS Query. And uh, this is going to allow us to search apps, repositories. If we give it the dash R flag, I believe we can search for programs that aren't on our computer yet. So let's search for maybe Ranger. Uh, this is a pretty good little file manager. And uh, oh, it looks like I found it. Okay, cool. So what we could do maybe now is XBPS dash install and install ranger got to do that as sudo try that again it's asking for the sudo password asking if we want to continue it's going to download the package okay looks good if we go ahead and try to run ranger now hey look at that we've got a, a proper file manager we can sort of fly around the system see what's going on here again look 
looks basically identical to what you would get in a different Linux distribution. They've got a media folder where you can mount drives if you want. You could also just mount them in slash MT. You can mount them wherever you want. Uh, yeah, cool. So I guess the best thing to do would be to try to get some sort of uh, graphical environment set up. Maybe we could do XBPS query dash R. And one thing I will say immediately is it seems like the kind of thing where if I'm going to use this at all, I'm going to need to set up a ton of aliases because there is no way I'm going to type out XBPS query dash R every time I want to search for a fucking package. But, you know, hey, that's not necessarily a downside. Um, I searched for awesome and oh, it found it. Cool. So we've got the awesome window manager. Looks like let's go ahead and do XB uh, sudo XBPS install uh, awesome. And I feel like the odds that they have a lacquer are pretty good. Looks good to me. Let that go ahead and run. Uh, you can see all the different packages that it's grabbing here. Uh, and it does also look like this is using um, X11, not a Wayland or anything else. So we should be able to like create an XNet RC and uh, run that pretty easily. We might have to install Xorg. I am not 100% sure, but we'll, we'll find out here in a minute when this is done installing. Okay, so it looks like we're good. Let's go ahead and create a .x init rc. And now looks like as good a time as any to figure out if we have vim installed. I'm just gonna assume that we do. We don't. What, what do we have, nano? We do have v. Uh, also, we can fix this really easily though. sudo xbps install. How about neovim? Do you have that? Looks good. I, I was sure it would have NeoVim. I don't mean to insinuate that XBPS is in some way like a, a terribly unmature package manager. It's certainly not. One of the things that's true of, I mean, almost every Linux distribution, whether it's based on Ubuntu or Arch or Yay or, or something else, is fairly mature. If you go and use something like Solus or XBPS or, or even BSD, FreeBSD or OpenBSD, those package managers have most of the software that you're going to need to make your system usable. When you get to the edges, and start to install things that are maybe a little more funky. Sure, you might have to compile some things yourself or something else, but uh, for the most part, you'll have what you need uh, to at least get started. So here we have, uh, and we're in our X and RC, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna type in Ezek awesome, which is how you're going to get awesome to start. And we'll go ahead and just try and run start X. That did not work. Uh, so it looks like what we need to do is sudo xbps install and xorg, install all of that. Okay, uh, so I think we're good now. We'll go ahead and try to run start X. And we're in. Okay, cool. So I think uh, it's command R, run a prompt here. Go ahead and trade, uh, maybe do sudo xbps install, and we'll install uh, AR and R, just so that I can jack with the screen resolution really quickly. Uh, do we have XR and R installed? We do, so I could do, uh, you know what, whatever. I don't know, maybe that's not important to mess with. Uh, right now, anyways, we have uh, a setup here where we're on uh, Void Linux, and I think this is probably a good place to end the video. Uh, I wanna mess around with it a little bit more, get a little bit more familiar with the package manager before I do any more videos about it. Um, just for the record, uh, I did put the ISO on a USB, and it's going right here on uh, the old uh, MacBook. Right now it's running uh, Arch Linux, actually. Um, I I just typically if I'm going to test something, I do it on this laptop because I'm not always a huge fan of running things in a VM. I don't think it's a great uh, representation for how it's going to perform in the real world necessarily. But uh, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll uh, see you in the next one.